just a video of it out there. Uh, I think he loves to scrap. Is this your question? <laughs> I'd rather fight a hundred, hundred of them. <laughs> Full stop. How are you finding the switch to 15? Is it something you'll consider permanent or just temporary for this World Cup? Um, I'm finding the switch to 15 kind of interesting. Obviously, I love playing for England, so whenever I get the opportunity to take the field, I'm very grateful and honoured uh, to do so. Uh, my favourite position is to play fly half. However, I'll do anything that's best for the team. How do you get so much bounce in your hair? Backs everywhere want your secrets. And a less serious question, what was it like getting the call up for the Lions and did you notice a big change in how England dealt with you immediately after the tour? Uh, so I guess that's a two part question. How do I get much bounce in my hair? I don't really know. Um, thank, thank God I'm blessed with uh, a thick set of hair, uh, probably due to my mum and dad. Um, just hopefully it doesn't fall out anytime soon because I rely on it big time. And secondly, nah, nothing really changed off the back of that. Um, for me, it was obviously a, an honour and a dream of mine to, to be called up as, a, as injury cover for that tour, to be surrounded by guys who I idolised and looked up to, and to be able to train with them on a daily basis and learn as much as I can. Really, I think I, I developed as a person and, and as a player as well, and I definitely brought back some of that uh, to, to my time with England, and I've enjoyed playing ever since. Which member of the squad is the most likely to make it as an MMA fighter? Um, probably Courtney Lords, he's got a massive reach. Uh, I think he loves to scrap. I think he's quite hard, so uh, I don't think many people would want to fight him. Who makes Marcus Smith's Fantasy 15? Uh, I've got a couple of players. Caden Murley would be one of them. Uh, he finishes absolutely everything. He was top try scorer last season and I think he'll have another good season this year. Secondly, I'd go uh, Big Joe Cockner Singer again. He's an absolute freak. Uh, he loves carrying the ball, um, and I know if you give him the ball with, it, with, uh, with in space, I know he'll score points. Hey Marcus, you grew up in the Philippines, I believe. Is there a rugby scene out there? What made you take up rugby? Uh, so yeah, I, I was born in Philippines. I lived there for eight years. Um, and what kind of got me into rugby, obviously my, my dad uh, was big into his rugby, he's a very proud Englishman and over there he tried to set up a little junior academy for young kids, expat kids predominantly who, who were living at Philipp in Philippines at the time so that we could, we could play and get access to, to rugby whilst our parents were drinking on the side. Um, so I kind of uh, started to get involved in that and then with that we started expanding the team through inviting the um, the kids that lived where our rugby club was to, to come and join us and we ended up having a little team over there and um, I remember those days up to now and, and those were special memories and kind of got me into, into rugby at an early age. What was the biggest tackle in your career and who tackled you the hardest? Um, I think the biggest tackle in my career, I think it was a couple of years ago, I think I, I managed to get Luther Burrell off balance and I think there's a video of it out there. Um, and uh, the biggest tackle I've had against myself, probably Manny Tuilangi or Courtney Laws. They always, they always get me, um, I always try and play flat to the line and they always try and leave a late one on me. So, but they always uh, smile at me after. So it's, it's all fun and games at the end of the day. If you had to work at an office or desk job, what would it be? Uh, <laughs> I actually haven't put much thought into this. My dad used to be an estate agent, um, so I might give, give a go at that. I'll try and do that probably in, in a nice part of the world, maybe LA, uh, and join the, um, the Oppenheimer group. <laughs> Selling Sunset. Yeah, just a, just a collab. What has been your favorite stadium you've played in outside of England? Um, I've got a couple. I really enjoyed playing in Claremont. I think it's the Stad Marcel Michelin, right by the Michelin factory. Um, the atmosphere in there was electric. We didn't get the win on the day, but which was a shame. But to experience the atmosphere with the drums, with the with the cheering from the square, with the flares, uh, was amazing. And to do that at such a young age gave me good experience. Um, and then the best stadium I've played playing for England was Suncorp Stadium in Australia in Brisbane. Um, again, a very hostile environment. Um, it was on the back of 
a first test defeat and we had to win that game to stay in the series and we managed to get the job done and uh, that was a special day in, in, in my England career. Who is the most impressive player you've played against or with? Um, I think the most impressive player that I've played with is probably uh, my club teammate Danny Kerr. Uh, he comes out with all the tricks regularly. He's extremely enthusiastic about the game. Um, he makes everything look so effortless and what he does so well as well is, is bring everyone out, bring the best out of everyone else he plays with. Um, he's always got a smile on his face. I absolutely love playing with him and um, some of the bits of magic he can do off his left foot, right foot, uh, out the back passes. Um, it's, he's a joy to watch and, and definitely uh, a joy to play with as well. Do you have yerba mate before training sessions and how do you find it differs from caffeine? Um, yeah, so I basically I got into yerba mate through a couple of my Argentinian teammates at Harlequins, uh, Martin Landajo and Santi Garcia Botta, uh, both good friends of mine, but I kind of like the um, social element of it, the fact that we sat on long bus journeys together instead of being on our phones or doing our own thing, we communicate and converse and, and, and chat and I, I enjoyed that element of it, as well as that obviously it has some um, benefits in terms of caffeine and, and getting you up for training sessions or matches. So I do that as a byproduct to it. And also it stops me eating uh, fatty foods during the afternoon. So that's a big positive. Would you consider representing the Philippines when your England days are over? Um, one day I'd love to, love to help and be involved in Philippine rugby. My brother currently plays for Philippines at the minute, obviously, my heart and, and uh, my mind is fully with England at the minute. It's, it's, it's a dream of mine to, to be wearing this kit right now. And uh, one day that might be different or when I retire from here, uh, if I get that opportunity, um, if my body still holds up, it would be lovely to play with both my younger brothers. Do you have a favorite Filipino food? If yes, what is it? Um, yes, I do. It is uh, pork sinigang uh, with rice. Um, I love my Thai jasmine rice. Um, and pork sinigang is basically this spicy sour soup uh, with pork, there's loads of veg in it, um, but I start with a nice bowl of soup and then I start ladling the soup onto the rice and, and I could eat a couple of plates of that and the minute my mum lets me know that that's what she's cooking back home, I bomb down the A3 and the M23 to get back down to Brighton. What is your favourite song slash music to listen to pre-game? Um, so I've got a few songs I listen to. I listen to Run Boy Run, I uh, don't know who it's by, Wood Kid, I think. I listen to This Is Me from The Greatest Showman, which I quite like. I listen to Ardy, shout out to Ardy from Brighton. Um, cheeky Bars, I think it's cool. I listen to Greatness by Quavo. There's a few, there's a few tunes that I try and listen to, but I try and stay real relaxed before the game um, and enjoy the moment because that's why I train so hard to, that's why, that's why I train so hard, is for those moments and I want to make sure I go out there and enjoy them. What is your game day breakfast of choice? Uh, this might be slightly uh, controversial, um, but I love having rice with a couple of eggs, some sausages and a drizzle of ketchup on top. Perfect for me. What, what is your earliest rugby memory, both playing and watching? Uh, probably my earliest rugby memory watching um, was when Johnny did that drop goal against Australia and Jason Robinson scored that try in the World Cup final in 2003. Um, I don't know exactly if I was um, awake or I was living in the Philippines at the time at that, at that specific moment. However, my dad replayed that moment about 100 times during my, my childhood. So that's probably the biggest rugby memory um, growing up and playing is probably the best time I had playing rugby was when I was a lot younger in Singapore. Um, so my first memories of that was playing barefoot with, with my mates uh, whilst our parents were just enjoying a nice barbecue there, just playing touch for hours on end until the sun went down and then we'd repeat uh, at someone else's house or in another park. And for me, that's where I found the love uh, for the game and, and spending time with my friends as well as that. Um, really uh, got me excited about it and wanted, want, make, made me want to get involved. Do you get pre-game nerves and how do you deal with them? Um, so I'd say I get more nervous the night before of a game. That's when, when I'm sat in my room and I try and 
overthink stuff, that's probably when it comes in. So I try and push that away by uh, distracting myself with either my, my gaming console. So I like gaming um, nights before games, as well as listening to music or, or watching a series. On the day of the game though, I'm very excited. I'm really um, trying to cherish every moment because like I said earlier, I train so hard during the week for the, for the weekend and I want, to make, I want to make sure I take in everything um, that comes with, with match day. Have you enjoyed your first World Cup? Uh, yeah, I've absolutely loved it. Um, ever since I met up uh, with the squad in England at, at Penny Hill Park a few months ago, uh, there was a sense of excitement in the group. I've loved every minute uh, of training in England, in, in Verona, um, and, and then the minute we arrived in, in La Touque in France, uh, that was a special feeling in itself to, to go to that opening ceremony, something that I've dreamt of for, for a long time. Um, and it's one of my goals in my, in my rugby career. Uh, it was a special, special day for me and, and my family and everyone who's, who's been a part of my rugby journey. And every time I've had the opportunity to play in this World Cup, I've tried to cherish it and, and make the most because you never know when, when it's your last time, so you might as well make the most. Hi Marcus, how do you deal with the constant media attention you get? Do you pay much attention to the pundits, papers, online commentary or do you try and phase it out? As a young player, you've always had significantly more media attention than average and it's clear that can bring added pressure. Um, I guess I see that, I see pressure and, and when people talk about you, obviously it's, it's really nice, whatever it is, good, bad or indifferent, it's one of them that um, comes with the territory that I've chosen to, to be in. I've chosen to, to play professional sport um, and that's part and parcel of it. Uh, I don't really take much notice of it, to be honest. Um, I used to when I was younger, but I learned, I learned that lesson a few years ago that um, that's not gonna help my headspace, not gonna help my mindset. So I try and keep my circle very small, um, listen to the people that that, that love me and, and, and respect me and, and want me to want the best for me and, and with that I then make a plan and, and try and put it into action and, and improve whatever aspect of, of my game or, or me as a person that will enable me to, to play better on the weekend. Hi Marcus, do you train on your sidestep? Is it something you consciously develop or is it pure instinct? Um, to be honest, I don't actually practice it that much. I think it's come from watching um, the Fijian Sevens team when I was a lot younger. I was very uh, lucky to be able to go to the Hong Kong Sevens many times with my family and watching guys like Waisali Sarevi, William Ryder, Tomasi Kama from New Zealand, these sort of players, they used to bamboozle defences. They used to get the fans right on the edge of their seats and. I remember practicing hours on end in the garden with my brothers when I was younger, trying to beat each other, trying to stay away from contact. And um, I think that's, it comes instinctively to me, which I'm very lucky to have. Um, so I, I try and maximize that and, and use that to my advantage whenever I can. What is it like to be coached and kicking by Johnny? Um, I can't speak highly enough of, of how much Johnny's played a part in my career. Uh, from a kicking point of view, he's taught me all the basics and, and taught me many things around my right foot, left foot, spirals, drop goals, my goal kicking that I, I can't thank him enough to be brutally honest. Um, as well as that, he's also helped me with my mindset, with the way I see things, with the way I deal with circumstances, uh, which I feel has enabled me to, to develop as a player and as a person, both on and off the field. Um, and I've loved every minute working with him. Uh, he's obviously a legend of the game, of, Eng of the English game and, and the game of rugby. He's an icon across the world and to be able to have his support constantly and to be able to have him uh, fight in my corner always uh, means a lot to me and uh, I'm very grateful for that. How much did the Lions call up mean to you so early in, in your career, more so with the manner in which you found out? Um, obviously being selected as injury cover for the Lions um, a couple of years ago was was a dream come true. It's one of them pinch yourself moments. Uh, it, was, it was in my goals ever since I was real young and, and to have that at such a young time in my career was special. Um, and that year, to be honest, 2021 was, was a pretty special year in my career. First cap for England, uh, we won the league with Harlequins and to go on that tour. So 
it didn't quite sink in till till I got back from South Africa. But that whole year was was amazing, not just for me, but for my family as well. They were with me every step of the way, supporting me, pushing me, motivating me, and uh, we had a nice um, few weeks together post that to, to really let it sink in and, and enjoy um, the success of that year because to, it, it doesn't come around often and um, whenever it does come around you've got to make the most. Hi Marcus, I've had, had the pleasure of watching your brother Luke at Roslyn Park. How do you find time to pass down your skills and experience to him? Um, firstly, my brother's better than me. Uh, he's a lot bigger, he's better looking and he's, he's smashing at a park to be honest and it makes me proud that he plays for Philippines as well. Uh, I wouldn't say I, I go out there uh, actively to give him tips and stuff. Uh, I don't want our relationship to be solely about rugby. Um, if he asks me, I'm always there on, on tap to, to help him. If he, if he asks me to catch his balls while he's kicking, um, I'll be there for hours on end. I'll, be all, I'll always be there for him. Um, but I wouldn't go, up there, go out there and, and tell him exactly what I think constantly because I'm his brother, I'm not his coach, um, and that's not what we want our relationship to be. So, uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Do you watch any NRL? You have a lot of similarities and play styles with Reese Walsh. Is this your question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I see, I take that as a compliment. Um, I do watch a fair bit of NRL. Uh, I, I record, I have it on a series record at home, which is quite useful, so whenever I, get a chance, I, I stick it on and, and try and firstly enjoy the game because some of the rugby that's played in that league is, is pretty spectacular. And with that, take, try and take things and, and add things to my game. Obviously, Reese Walsh um, has burst on the scene the last couple of years. He's been an absolute revelation um, for the Broncos as well as for Queensland. And, and I think the way that he, he does it his way, he does it with a smile on his face. Um, he backs himself and, and you see that sort of confidence in him and you see the stadium erupt when he gets the ball and um, so th thank you very much if, you, if you're comparing me with him. Uh, he's obviously a brilliant player himself. So.